This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Policeman slaps a woman during Central Kingston confrontation. A viral video making rounds on social media shows a physical altercation Saturday between policemen and residents in the section of Central Kingston popularly referred to as Spoilers. The 42-second video shows policemen tussling with residents who apparently did not take kindly to the cops' presence in the area. Come out, come out, watch it from here, so a female is heard shouting. At one point in the video, a policeman is seen slapping a woman. The cops were reportedly responding to a shooting incident in the area. Second taxi operator murdered in Seaview Gardens. Another taxi operator has been shot dead in the community of Seaview Gardens in St. Andrew. A woman was injured in the incident that occurred about 11 p.m. on Saturday. The deceased has been identified as Duane Coke of a Seaview Gardens address. Coke and the woman were seated in his car when they were pounced upon by armed men, reports say. Shots were fired into the vehicle and both the occupants were injured. Coke drove from Seaview Gardens in an apparent attempt to reach the Kingston Public Hospital, but he lost the control of the vehicle and a crash along Marcos Garvey Drive. He succumbed to his injuries while the woman was admitted in serious condition. The St. Andrew South Police are investigating. On Thursday, 61-year-old Paul Tony Allen of a Janelle Avenue St. Jago West Spanish Town address was shot and killed in his car on Red Sea Drive in Seaview Gardens. Man charged in Old Harbor killing remanded. Andrew Williams, the man charged in the June fatal shooting of a bystander and the injury of another near a bus park in Old Harbor St. Catherine, was remanded following a court appearance on Friday. Williams, also known as Pang, is answering to the charges of murder, illegal possession of firearm, illegal possession of ammunition, shooting with intent, and wounding with intent. He appeared before the St. Catherine Parish Court where he was ordered to remain in custody until his next court date on July 28 before the corporate area gun court. It's alleged that about 8 a.m. on June 15, Williams shot two bystanders near the bus park in Old Harbor. The men were taken to hospital where one was admitted and Douglas pronounced dead. Williams was later held by the police in Old Harbor. Taxi driver and the shop operator shot dead in St. Thomas. A taxi driver and the shop operator were shot dead in Seafort, St. Thomas on Saturday night. They have been identified as 41-year-old Jermaine Jeffrey and Denise Bell 50, the police's corporate communications unit said. The incident happened around 10.25. The two were in a Subaru motor car in their community of Soho Hill when they were attacked. They were pronounced dead at hospital. Investigations are ongoing. DEPP wants better protection for witnesses. There has always been a concern for witnesses after they have given information in court and so Director of Public Prosecutions Paula Llewellyn is adamant that more must be done to protect them. Llewellyn stressed that more resources ought to be channeled into the government's witness protection program. The whole question of witness care as it relates to persons who are incarcerated serving a sentence and, for example, in a gang case, decide to take advantage of the Plea Negotiations Act, Section 20, says if you offer or if you assist the prosecution of the investigation in a particular case, you can get a reduction in your sentence. Llewellyn said while presenting at a symposium on prison reform hosted by Improved Access to Justice in the Caribbean, from July 5 to 6 at the St. Kitts Marriott Resort and at the Royal Beach Casino in this eastern Caribbean island. Llewellyn added that due to prisoners taking advantage of the act, the system has been able to prosecute successfully. That is an element I would wish to focus on, the whole question of witness care from persons who are going to be cooperating witnesses. And we in Jamaica have been doing some gang prosecutions and we have recognized that there is no provision in respect of the infrastructure to cater for prisoners who are serving a sentence and who have consented to use the Plea Negotiations Act and get that advantage of getting several years shaved off their sentence. 
In 2019, the Ministry of Justice pledged to improve the state of witness care and the protection in Jamaica. Former Executive Director of the Legal Aid Council, Hugh Faulkner, who represented the Minister of Justice, was speaking during the opening session of the country's first comprehensive witness care conference, which was held at the Faculty of Law at the University of the West Indies on July 19, 2019. Faulkner had said that key stakeholders, which included justice sector officials, the legal fraternity, civil society and the judiciary, that the Jamaica government stands ready to work along with the partners and the implementing agencies to strengthen systems and the processes to benefit witnesses. Chief Justice Brian Sykes was also at the 2019 conference, which was a multi-agency collaborative initiative involving the Justice Ministry, Global Affairs Canada, the United Nations Development Programme, and the Justice Undertakings for Social Transformation Programme. Justice Sykes, too, called for equitable justice services for witnesses. However, the first problem, Llewellyn said, is housing informants in the same prisons as the people they are working against. You can't keep them in the same facility in respect of the accused that they are going to be given evidence against. You can't do that, she lamented, highlighting the possibility of witness intimidation. Llewellyn also exampled one man who recently pleaded guilty to 11 counts of murder and is part of a gang in Jamaica without detailing names and location. Through him, we have been able to bring down another three or four members of the gang. But when we do these plea deals, we cannot make it public because it will sensitize the gangs or the gangsters that this plea deal is what is going to bring them down and that they will target their families. That is something witnesses worry about, how to make sure their families are protected while they are incarcerated. The Witness Protection Program people at the Ministry of National Security, who made a deal with members of the family of the incarcerated individual, we have to communicate with them and to make sure that they understand that the administration of justice will be enhanced by the extra witness care being given. It is difficult because they are incarcerated, so we have to depend on the correctional authorities to be responsive and usually they are but sometimes the bureaucracy gets at them, Llewellyn said. Manor Park residents disapprove of raw sewage flowing into gullies. Residents of Springway and other communities within the Manor Park St. Andrew area are perturbed after they found out recently that raw sewage was being channeled into gullies through pipes which emanates from big housing developments in the area. President of the Springway Simpsons Association, Yashika Lopez cited that residents who made major investments in property in the area fear that the practice could make them sick as well as devalue their properties, which they sacrificed and worked hard to acquire. Lopez told the news that her association, in collaboration with other associations in the area, called a meeting recently, which representatives from the National Works Agency and the National Water Commission attended. The aim of the meeting was to raise awareness on the approval process that would give developers the impression that it is acceptable to send raw sewage into gullies. Other related issues were discussed as well. Two weeks ago, we discovered construction of a piping along the Springway Gully. There was some construction going on at Norbrook Drive, and the two residences at the back of Springway were informed of that construction and they were approached to run sewage piping through their property to the gully. This was last year and we instructed them to say no. So when we discovered the piping works being constructed in the gully two weeks ago, we naturally assumed it was sewage. It was later confirmed when we had a meeting with the three of the agencies, National Environment and the Planning Agency, National Water Commission, and the National Works Agency. It was confirmed as well by NWC that it is piping for sewage. Lopez insisted that the community was not informed and raised the questions over whether it is now standard operating procedure to build the sewage pipes in gullies. We want to understand if that is best a practice. What we understand is that the gullies are there for stormwater runoff during rains, hurricanes, etc. We also understand from NWA that sewage should not be running through a gully, so we didn't understand what the change in the procedure was. We understand that sewage piping should run under the road, 
so we didn't understand why it is not running under the road at Norbrook Drive and why it is being run through a gully. There is Norbrook Drive right there. We have concerns not just for health, but also for our storm waterway. Remember, everything is going to the sea. We don't want raw sewage or effluent going straight into the sea, even though we know it is happening in some places. The concern is that we see a lot of construction going on around the place, and we want to know if there is enough infrastructure in place to sustain the level of new developments we see in the area. Again, is this the best practice? We don't know. We are yet to be answered. One can set a precedent, but is it best practice? I would like to understand that first and foremost. The other concern we have is public health, in terms of the health concern. The oxides it releases are not good for the body. Communications manager at the NWA, Stephen Shaw, told the news that he would make some checks to familiarize himself on the details of the situation. NWC communications manager Andrew Cannon could not provide much detail on what role the NWC could play to remedy the situation. Efforts to secure comments from Peter Knight, executive director of NEPA, were unsuccessful. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.